Welcome back to the channel today. We are in the midst of our 30 day challenge to spend just 15 minutes in the garden every day. If you have 15 minutes, you can spare it to grow your own food. And today we are going to be planting seeds. You'll have to forgive my wet hair. <laughs> I just had to, we had a torrential downpour and I had to run out and save my little seedlings that are currently in trays. So let's go head over to the shed and we're going to get some of our seed starting mix um, into the tray so that we can get some winter and late fall seeds planted. So I make my own seed starting mix, which I have right here. I pre-make a bunch of it in advance and um, pre-mix it and everything. And then all I have to do is when it's time to start seeds, I just grab what I need and put it in a tray. It starts with a brick. <laughs> I think that's what they're called, a brick of coconut core. Um, and then I add in some compost and then um, a few other nutrients like blood meal, bone meal, and kelp meal. And then I add some perlite and that's pretty much all it is. You can buy a seed starting mix, but if you happen to have, you know, some some coconut core or some, I think the other one is peat moss that people use, and then a few nutrients. You can make your own seed starting mix. And there we have it. So now we're back with our seed starting mix in the trays, getting ready to plant our seeds. There are a few mistakes that people typically make when they're starting seeds. We're gonna tackle those while we see seeds in the trays. Um, the first one, <laughs> and probably that I hear the most questions about is when to start certain vegetables. I think it's safe to say that there's about three different kinds of vegetables that you can grow. There's gonna be things like cool season crops, then you have your warm season crops, and then you have your tropical crops. So when I say um, cool season crops, I'm, I'm talking about things like broccoli, cauliflower, karobi, lettuce. There's a lot that really enjoy growing during fall and early spring as well as winter down here in florida then you have more of your warm season crops like your tomatoes and your peppers eggplants and beans and corn that like more of a warmer season rather than um, the cold season that we're we're growing for right now and then you have uh, what i like to call our tropical varieties and these are the things that are going to grow during the worst heat of summer in florida these are your non-traditional type vegetables um, that typically are things that maybe you would never see at a grocery store another thing that i have seen a lot of people make a mistake with is not succession planting um, i know that it is a little extra work to plant more seeds and trays than what you need but I'm telling you right now, those moments where things die and um, or they get eaten up by a pest or something kind of bad happens, you're not wasting that space for the rest of the season. You have seeds that can go in its place. And I feel like that's one of um, the big failures that people fail to think about when they're planting their garden is, is you're gonna put all this effort and all this time into this plant and then you're gonna have a problem with it and you don't have a backup plan. And succession planting for me is that backup plan. Um, I am able to harvest a lot because I don't just rely on plan A, I'm going with plan B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. <laughs> so start succession planting. It's an easy way to just drop a couple seeds. We get thousands of seeds in these um, seed packets right here. I'm never gonna grow enough kale <laughs> to use all these seeds. So it's an excellent, opportunity to succession plant these things. Another mistake that people can make is with the seed starting mix. So we just put together our seed starting mix and mine is super fluffy. And, but at the same time of being fluffy, it also has that sand or perlite in it to really help it with drainage of the water so that the, the seeds don't drown. When you use something like regular garden soil as a seed starting mix, you're going to have a few problems. One is going to be there's not a whole lot of nutrition in regular garden soil. There's also going to be a problem with the fact that the seedlings are going to have a hard time popping up through the surface because the the mix has like little sticks and twigs and things like that that lays over top of those seeds and, and keeps them from being able to break that surface and come up. You're also gonna have a problem where the uh, mix will hold up too much water and won't drain. 
So those are all mistakes that you can make by not getting an appropriate seed starting mix. Some other things to think about when you're starting seeds in trays is one, you want a base. Now I, I'm using this plastic dome, but what you're supposed to use a plastic dome for is to cover your seedlings like so, um, place it on top and it creates like this humid environment. So some people maybe up north who maybe don't have a human environment like we do down here in Florida really need to be using these plastic trays. But when you live in Florida, for the most part, you generally do not need these plastic covers. So a lot of times I double these trays as um, things in the bottom to hold some water. I had a viewer ask me the other day about why their seeds are failing. They say they are watering from the bottom up. And I said, well, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, when you're starting seeds, you actually need to start them watering on the top uh, because the seed is on the top. It's not gonna suck up the water from the bottom when it's first starting out. So it does need those little spritz of water, not a lot. You always wanna kind of top water at first. And I just use this little spray bottle right here. And I, that's all I do. That's pretty much all they need is a little squirt right when you get them started. If you have it out in direct sunlight, it could possibly dry out more, but I usually don't even move my, move my seedlings over to direct sunlight until after they germinate. And that's all there is to it. We're just gonna finish watering these guys from the top and then we're gonna set them and in about three to five days, all of our seedlings will be ready and sprouted and germinated and we go put them in the sun. Thank you so much for watching. We did spend just 15 minutes putting our seed mix together and planting our seeds. So once again, 15 minutes, you can grow all your own food.